It's the NFL on EA Sports. And we'll see the Buccaneers, rookie linebacker. He's been one of the best blitzers in the NFL this season and is among the league leader in sacks. It's the Bucks and the Texans, and it's all up next. On a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas, the roof is open, and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Today, it's a Week 9 matchup. We're all set to go, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Houston Texans. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Texan ball club entering play here. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape. The Buccaneers defense ready to go and in good form, coming off the shutout a week ago. And the one we'll be watching is this man, head linebacker. And he had a great game a week ago. Just about everybody on this unit did in the shutout. It's going to be a tough performance to replicate. But this group, they believe they're up to the challenge. Stroud looks to throw on the first play. That one complete. It's Tank Dell. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, this defense for the Buccaneers, they were terrific last week in the victory over Buffalo. Yeah, we're definitely in top form and pitched a shutout, as a matter of fact. That's the cherry on top of a great week of preparation. And you know what? These guys are eager to keep it going. Some motivation this week, not an issue. John Mechie was his intended target, and it's third and four. You look at this defense for Tampa Bay. They were terrific last week against Buffalo in that victory. Yeah, they pitched a shutout in that game, didn't they? And those don't come around all that often in the NFL. The ability to keep someone out of the end zone and also from kicking one through the post. Well done. Finding space at the 40. A solid stick on. And finally marked down at the 42-yard line. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Let's go. Stroud will look to throw once more. To the right side and caught by Dell. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Rookie to rookie on the hookup there, and it's a first down. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I think we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. It's another first down as they look his way again this time, 19 yards. They'll run it for the first time with Damian Pierce. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. Just inside the 20 at the 19. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. So the sacks, they just keep on coming for this first-round pick. All hyperbole aside, he has become almost unblockable. Well, let's bring the hyperbole back into it. I don't want to put it aside at all because when I first saw him come out, I thought by year two or three he'd be a pro bowler, maybe year four or five and all pro, but I underestimated him in a big way. He's one of the top two or three linebackers in the NFL right now as a rookie. Okay, a long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Here's Stroud. Under pressure, they got him again. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know, he made it, taking the loss there on third down. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move.
The Tampa Bay defense back onto the field. They'll search for a stop here in the second quarter of a game that's all tied. Stroud now on first and ten. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense gotten it, they were already within the shadow of the goalpost. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now Stroud. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Call it a gain of six on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line, it's a sack. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. So, Charles, I mean, this is just becoming an exhibition now on how to rush the passer. Yeah, and I can't help but laugh a little bit because I'm enjoying what we're watching. This is coming from a guy who was in college just a year ago, and we keep harping on their evaluation. They saw not just a guy who could rush the passer, but could rush the passer well, and that's why they took him as high as they did. defense getting ready for this next possession they'll try to get the football right back to their offense who just punted so now they'll try to force a punt themselves it's first and ten They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook. It was so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On the bootleg, Stroud. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. But that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring okay, in an extra ready. defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Stroud on third down now. And he is going to be taken down. They got him. As that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Tampa Bay defense back onto the field. Their guys have the lead here in this first half. They'll try to further the cause on their end as this drive begins first and ten. Here we go, shot. First and ten, it's Stroud. They'll try and set up the screen, it's complete. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Nice job by the defense, figuring that play out and holding 
it to a short game, but I don't think the offense is going to be daunted. They actually accomplished their goal there. Now they've got them aware that they can throw a screen at them, maybe to slow the pass rush down a little bit, and they can throw it downfield. And this time they'll just keep this on the ground. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send John over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, all right, Brandon. Thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. And it's the Vikings who are out in front. Kirk Cousins has fired three touchdown passes. From there, we'll jet north to Ohio to check in on the Browns at home at Cleveland Browns Stadium. And they've got the lead over the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Two touchdown passes there for Deshaun Watson. Finally, let's get down to the Bayou. Check in on the Saints at home at the Caesars Superdome. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. The Bears still in a dogfight, but this would be a good victory for them if they could get it. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. The Bucs defense getting ready for this next possession. They've been the dominant side so far, working with a two-score lead here in this third quarter as this next drive gets underway. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Now with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Second and ten. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. Stroud. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. The Tampa Bay defense back onto the field. They've been terrific all game long, have not let this offense get on track, and they try to close this one out here in the fourth. Ready, ready. On first down, here's Stroud. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. Come on, come now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Stroud to throw it. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. I know that rookie quarterbacks have to earn veteran receivers' trust. 
Maybe we saw that on that play with that type of effort, huh? Yeah, helping out the Rook with a heck of a catch. He's got his target. That's complete. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Stroud to the air on first and 10. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Drown. And that is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. throughout the organization here because they said going into the regular season eight wins was the benchmark they can check that box off the list and let's face it many teams are going to say well eight wins how much is that that's a big number for this team and that was a great goal and to reach it that's just going to give them confidence moving forward